Octopath Traveler has a beautiful and unique art style that certainly started there, but the story definitely did not. I'm not talking Live Alive, I'm not talking Saga Frontier, I'm talking real old school. I'm talking 1387 kind of old school. The Canterbury Tales by Geoffrey Chaucer is, in my argument, where Octopath Traveler actually started. So let's look at some of those thematic and structural similarities between these two ideas and maybe I can prove it to you. Let's see what's up with these two masterpieces. You're gonna learn today. You're gonna learn. The most obvious part of this whole thing is the multiple protagonists. The Canterbury Tales has multiple protagonists, and the game has multiple protagonists. In the Canterbury Tales, we encounter just this, this wildly diverse group of pilgrims, each with their own distinct stories, motivations, and backgrounds, and hey, how about that? We see the same thing in Octopath Traveler. The tales are a fascinating exploration of character diversity and their personal experiences, and Octopath Traveler does the same thing. I want to change that. I want Ku to be a home for all, regardless of birth. A place where we look out for each other. In order to realize that, I would suffer any loss. Thank you, everyone! The fun is just getting started. Now, watch me shine! Octopath Traveler specifically takes a group of eight unique characters, each with their own individual storylines, and shows you them, allows you to experience them. We get to be the merchant, we get to be the dancer, we get to be the bard, we get to be these people and share in their, their journey through this world, which is exactly what Geoffrey Chaucer was doing with the Canterbury Tales. And so, without further gilding the lily, and with no more ado, I give to you the seeker of serenity, the protector of Italian virginity, the enforcer of our Lord God, the one, the only Octopath Traveler. What makes these two pieces of art super compelling is exploring the backgrounds of these characters. We delve into the story and motivations for each of these characters in both the Canterbury Tales and Octopath Traveler. Very amusing, I must say. Very droll. You can see a splinter in my eye, not a plank in his own. Oh, no. The Canterbury Tales explains each pilgrim's tale and provides us with a deeper understanding of their personality and their life experiences. Sometimes it's a sad thing, sometimes it's a funny thing. Sometimes it's a bit of a raunchy thing. Oh, oh, it's a little saucy, a little spicy, if you know what I mean. In the pure water of Diana's temple, Emily ritually disrobed and... <laughs> well, that's I shouldn't go into details right now, but it'd be fun, hey? But back in Octopath Travel World, we're seeing the same sort of thing. How nice it must be to be the master's favorite. Fine, go on and keep your airs. Act as though you're better than the rest of us. It doesn't change the fact that you're just another dancer in the sands, Primrose. Nothing but a kept woman. Here to flatter the dignity of men who pay for the privilege. In Octopath Traveler, the game structure it encourages players to, to explore the past, move around these stories, see the motivations of each character, figure out what's going on and not necessarily a linear time. But that also gives us plenty of chances to connect and understand the individual journey on a personal level. Both of these setups are interconnected as well. The Canterbury Tales and Octopath Traveler both share this interesting aspect. In Chaucer's masterpiece, the, the pilgrims, who are all diverse, are loosely connected through the framework of their pilgrimage, the journey that they're currently on. And this allows their stories to intertwine. It's not necessarily that each pilgrim has a story that is affected by the other pilgrims, but they are still on the same pilgrimage. Octopath Traveler does this as well. While the characters have their own separate storylines, which are incredible, they can and do interact with each other in various ways, contributing to a, a larger, interconnected narrative. And you may be thinking, doesn't every game do this anyway? You have characters that have their own motivations or whatever? Yeah, yeah, they do. But this is much more like focus on the individual, more so than on the group. Almost the opposite. So in, in most games, you would see this person has their motivations, this person has their own motivations, that causes them to interact with each other in a certain manner. The Canterbury Tales and Octopath Traveler, though, is more so focused on uh, the individual than the group. It's just that they're all in the same great struggle. They're all dealing with the same stuff, whether it's the pilgrimage or trying to save the world 
world, the focus lies and the best part of it is on the individual story. With this though, both of them have this very nice interwoven tapestry in their stories, in, their, in the tale that is being told. We see diverse themes, we see diverse writing styles. The Canterbury Tales is actually a little renowned for its diverse writing styles for each of these pilgrims. It's kind of different, like, it was Chaucer writing all of this stuff, but each story feels different somewhat. In the same way, Octopath Traveler offers a variety of gameplay experiences, a little bit of a different experience and actual gameplay, and then also in the story and the themes throughout. Some of them are incredibly heavy, some of them are dark, but then some of them are very light and whimsical, which is not different from Chaucer's. And I think what you get here is the ability to relate to certain characters more than others, which is exactly what audiences were doing with the Canterbury Tales as well, and still do. As for Octopath Traveler, I personally really, really like the merchant. I love the sense of adventure and just naivete, I guess, of the merchant in Octopath Traveler 1. That's me. But then I like the, the fighting for what's good in the world in Octopath Traveler 2 with that merchant. And out of the people that were playing Octopath at the same time I was, that I'd spoken to about these characters, every person had a different person that they were relating to, that they thought had the most compelling story. Which is really, hey, that's good storytelling. That's really good storytelling. The Canterbury Tales and Octopath Traveler also deal with themes of morality and questions about these sort of things. What is human nature? What is morality? And it's not just light and dark, it's a little bit of gray area in there. These are the complexities of life that doesn't make every story just black and white, good guy versus bad guy. It makes you question, who is the good guy? Who is the bad guy? Am I doing what's right for the world? This sort of stuff we see in Octopath Traveler for sure, but still somewhat established in Canterbury Tales, questioning people getting people to think about a perspective a little differently than they might have been used to. The dilemmas and personal growth that each character goes through in these stories helps establish who they are in the overarching narrative. I guess the experiment of taking all of these stories and pushing them into one to show us what is the human condition. It's really neat. While they may be different mediums, one's a video game, one is a story, they're not that different. While they come from two hugely different timelines, they're not that different. The neat thing is that their thematic and structural similarities, they, they remind us that the exploration of diverse characters, interconnected stories, and these, these profound and diverse themes is a timeless aspect of storytelling, whether it be in literature or whether it be in the world of gaming. And maybe this is the kind of conversation that we need to move toward anyway, as video games have become such an important means of telling a story, of sharing human experience. Such a cathartic and incredible way to remind us that we're not so different, that we are all involved in the same great struggle. What are some other stories in video games that owe their legacy to these these huge staples, these juggernauts in literature. Again, drop that comment because, hey, video game discourse is important, obviously, so we should continue. Bubby Cat Viking and Luther Bob, it's important that you know. I love you. You? <laughs>